Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called, Is Being a Vegan Righteous? Is Being a Vegan Righteous? So I'm going to deal with this Bible share and hopefully you'll be edified. Um, so let's let's dive straight into it because everybody knows what a vegan is. A vegan is someone that doesn't deal with meat. Doesn't deal with anything to do with animals, really. Um, vegetarians, they still deal with milk and eggs, but it's just that they don't deal with meat. Right. But vegans don't deal with any animal products whatsoever. Right. So let's jump into it. Genesis one. And we're going to read from twenty nine to thirty. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in in the which is the fruit of in in the which is the fruit of the field yielding seed to you it shall be for meat 30 and to every beast of the earth to every fowl of the air and to everything that creep it upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and the evening and morning were the sixth day okay so the important thing to take from that is that he introduced uh herbivores Right. Nobody had meat. It was just herbs because it tells you in 30 and to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air and to everything that creep it upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. So that was a vegetarian diet right, of a herbivore. There was no meat that was consumed. OK, so let's now go to Genesis 6. And we're going to read from 18 to 22. But with thee all I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou thy sons, thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive, and with thee shall be male and female. So there was two of the animals, specific animals were brought into the ark, male and female. Of fowls after their own kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. 21. And take thou unto thee all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that the Lord commanded him so did he okay so let's now go to seven so we're going to slip down to genesis seven and we're going to read from one to six and the lord said unto noah come thou or thy house into the ark for thee have i seen righteous righteous before me in the generation of every clean beast thou shalt take to, to thee by sevens the male and his females and the beasts that are not clean by two and male and his female of fowls also of the air of sevens the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth but yet seven days and i will cause it to rain upon earth 40 days and 40 nights and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So Noah was told to build an ark and to put animals in it along with his family, male and female. Right. And then afterwards, the most high flooded the earth. Right. So let's skip down to 14. And we can read 14 to 16. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creep it upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird after every sort. And they went in unto Noah, unto the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in and went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. Right. So the Lord locked the door. He bolted the door so that it, the, the, the ark couldn't get flooded. OK, so it was floating on the water. OK, so Genesis nine and we're going to read from one to four. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Right. So this I suppose this was after the flood. And the fear of him and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that move it upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Let's continue. Every moving thing that live it shall be meat for you, even as the green herb had I given you all things. So the Most High said you can eat the herbs, but also you can consume the animals also. 
4. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So the only thing you're not eating is blood. So you must cook your meat because in the blood there is life. Okay. Actually, it does say it here. So let's continue it into five. And surely your blood of your lives, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Okay. All right. Let's read six. Whoso sh should it man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. But in the image of God man made he man. Okay. Now, the important thing to take from that is that in, in four where it says, but the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Right. So blood carries spirits in it. Right. So that's why the Lord tells us that when your wife is on her menstrual cycle, you're not supposed to be having sex with her because the blood is shed in life. Okay, because the blood carries life. That's the significance of blood is that it carries spirits. Right. So when she's going through her menstrual, she's shedding blood, which has life in it. But blood in itself carries spirits. Okay, so the blood carries spirits. So that's why when you're having your meat, it should be well cooked. It shouldn't be medium rare or rare. It shouldn't be pink or, or still red with blood, swimming in blood. Right. That's that's the wrong way to do your meat, because it's it does. It's not only bad for you because it has bacteria in it. It also the blood carries spirits in it that you don't want in your system. OK. Right. So let's now go to Leviticus 11. So we're going to go to Leviticus 11. And we're now going to go to the law of the dietary law. Because the law, the Mosaic law, is split can be split into four. So you got your, uh, you got your sacrificial law, you got your ceremonial law, you got your dietary law, and you got the moral law. Okay. So the dietary law is in Leviticus eleven. So we're now going to go to clean and unclean animals. Okay. So we're reading eleven. We read from one to twenty three. So we pretty much got a lot to read. So we're going to read it fast. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, those shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud of them that divided the hoof of the, ca of the camel. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So you're not supposed to eat camels. And a coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And a coney. And a hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. So this was the institution of the dietary law. Right? Now, in Genesis, I should have pointed that out. There was a distinguishment between clean and unclean. So even back then, there was an understanding of what was clean and what wasn't clean. Right. Because it does actually say that in Genesis. Um, so this is just a continuation of, of this. This is the official law under Moses. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that. OK, let's move down to six. And the hare, because he chew it the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and he cloven footed, yet he chew it not the cud, he is unclean to you. So the pig, you can't eat the pig. And of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch, they are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins, scales in the waters, in the seas, in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So only fishes with, with fins and scales, and all that have not fins and scales in the waters, in the rivers, and all that move in the waters, for any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So if it doesn't have fins and scales, it is abomination to eat it. It's the worst type of sin. 11. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever heart no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be abomination unto you. And these are they which which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are abomination. The eagle, the os, osophorage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite, and, and his kind, every raven after his kind, 
and the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind, the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gare eagle and the stork and the heron after her kind and the lapwing and the bat and all fowls that creep upon all fours shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all fours which have legs above their feet to leap with withal upon the earth even these of them you may eat the locusts after his kind so you can eat the locusts and the board ochus locust the board locust after his kind and the beetle after his kind and grasshopper after his kind so you can eat these but all other flying creeping things which have four feet shall be abomination unto you because these uh, these animals normally eat vegetation, right? They don't eat filth, okay? Uh, but all these flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be abomination unto you, but everything else is abomination. So let's go to 46, 47. This is the law of the beasts, of the fowl, and of every living creature that move it in the waters, and every creature that creep, creep it upon the earth, to make a difference between the clean and the unclean, and the clean, and between the beast, and that may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. Okay? So, that was the law and the dietary law. Obviously, I didn't read all of it, but um, you get the picture. Right? There is clean animals and unclean animals. Okay? So, let's now go to 1 Timothy 4, reading from 1 to 5. So, uh, the reason why I'm going here is to prove that you can have meat. Meat is fine. You can have meat, you know, but as long as it's clean meat, okay? As long as it's clean meat. Because anything else, um, you will be de defiling your holy temple. So, that's the point I'm trying to make by going through these scriptures, right? So, we're going to 1 Timothy 4, reading from 1 to 5. Now, Spirit speaker expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed, heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So that's happening now, right? We have the prosperity doctrine. That's a very good example. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So it means they have no conscience. You know, they just blatantly want your money. They want your money and they give a damn about you. They tell you blatantly, oh, well... You know, you point something out in the Christian church and say, oh, well, you preaching on praying and, you know, fasting. But what about obedience? And the, the preacher will say to you, or the minister will say to you, oh, well, you can't beat, beat people over the head. But what really that means is that you can't actually make these people feel that they're sinning. Because if you make them feel that they're sinning, then they won't want to come back. They won't want to come back and they won't want to give money. So the more happier you are, is the more money flows. Because if you're in a in logic, if you're in good spirits, you're happy, you're having a great time, you're more inclined to give. But if you go to a, a place whereby you've been told about your sins the whole time, you know, because the inner man, the inner man inside of you doesn't want to hear that. He's the spirit inside of you is comfortable in your sin. So if if you go to a place where he feels uncomfortable, of course, you're not going to be inclined to want to. To want to give as much or come as much right so so that's what the prosperity doctrine is about it's a doctrine of devils but not only that but there's you know all these other false doctrines that arise you know like we're still under moses and all stuff like that you know when christ came and he is the official high priest you know things like that anyhow let's carry on Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Right. So it's talking about clean meat. We're not, talking, we're not talking about a crocodile and it's not talking about, you know, snakes and rats and mice and bats and cats and, and, and dogs and all the rest of it. Not talking about that. It's talking about clean meat, you know, meat that is clean, as in Leviticus, who believe and know the truth. For, for every creature of God is good. Every creature of God is good. So every creature was made for a particular purpose. When it was made, it was good. And nothing to be refused is not to be refused. So he's talking about the food, right? So if it's if it's good to eat, you you know, you don't have to refuse it. It's talking about the Catholic priests, priests and, and Lent, right? And some of the Methodist and Anglican churches um, uphold to Lent as well. Because they got it from Catholicism, 
Okay? So, that's what it's getting at. It's getting at because during Lent, you can't have, like, beef and stuff like that. You can only have, I think it's fish, right? Or you can't have meat at all. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it received with thanksgiving. So it's talking about the meat that is sanctified for you to eat. You can have it. You can eat it. You don't have to stay away from meat. Okay, that's what it's saying. But it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay, all right, that's fine. So you can you can pray over your food, right? Because that's ultimately, you need to be praying over your food anyway, right? <clears throat> so it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So the word of God would be the differences between clean and unclean animals, right? So that's the word of God and prayer, okay? Right. In other words, you can't give Thanksgiving to eat a swine because there's no Thanksgiving for that because you're eating something which is detrimental to your health. Right. So that's what that that's what that is getting at. Right. So let's go to Acts 15 and we're going to read from 19 to 20 before I lose my voice. OK, so we read in Acts 15 and we're reading from 19 to 20. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. 20. That we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of the, of the idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old heart in every city, them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So we are supposed to stay away from idolatry worshipping of other gods fornication which is the worshipping of other gods in that context and real fornication too and from things strangled and from blood so it's talking about um uh so in terms of the meat you're you're not supposed to be having bloody meat okay you're not supposed to be having bloody meat and you're supposed to uh, the way how you, there's a certain way of which you're you were supposed to do your meat, okay, and it's saying that you should stay away from anything that has the blood in it, right? So you're supposed to stay away from anything from blood. So it would be like things like kidney and liver and stuff like that, right? Or rare meat or medium rare meat, that kind of thing, right? Let's read. Let's read it again. Let's read that bit again. It says, "But we." There's twenty. That we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of the idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Okay. So, again, like I've said before, blood carries spirits in it. So, whatever you're eating, it must be cooked properly. Okay. All right. So, let's go to 1 Corinthians 8. And we're going to read from 8 to 9. 1 Corinthians 8. And we'll read from eight to nine. But meat commanded us not to God, for neither if we eat, we are the better. Neither if we eat not, are we the worse. Right. So it's talking about eating meat. Right. So if you choose to eat meat, it's good. If you choose not to, good too. Let's read it again. But eat commanded us not, but meat commandeth us not to God, for neither if we eat or if we we the better. Neither if we eat not, are we the worse. So if you don't have meat, you're not the worse, right? Let's carry on to nine. But take heed, least by any means, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay, let's read eight again. But meat commanded us not to God, for neither if we eat, are we, are we the better. Neither if we eat not, are we the worse, right? Nine. But take heed, least by any means, this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to them that are weak, right? So, don't let it become a stumbling block. If you choose to have meat, eat meat. If you choose to have, uh, choose to be a vegan or vegetarian, then that's up to you. It's your choice. But don't use it as a stumbling block. In other words, don't say, well, oh, well, why are you not having meat? You know, you're wrong. You should be having meat. That's wrong. You don't use it as a stumbling block. And when you're not having meat, don't be like, oh, you're eating meat. Why are you eating meat? It has this, 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 that and the other. That's wrong with it. If it's clean and it's sanctified by the word of God, as I read in 1 Timothy 4, then you can have it. It's fine. Okay, right. So let's now go to Romans 
14, and we're going to read from 1 to 3. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful dis disputions. But one believe it, that he may eat all things, another who is weak, eat it herbs. Okay, so, talking about being a vegetarian and being a meat eater again. Let not him that eat it despise him that eat it not, and let him which eat it not judge him that eat it, for God hath received him. For art thou the judge judges another man's servant to his own? Okay, so I basically read on there. But essentially what is said, let's go back to the beginning again. Him that is weak in the faith receive he, he but, but not to doubtful disputations. But one believeth that he may eat all things, right? So one person eats herbs, meat, everything. He's a meat eater. Another which is weak eat it herbs. So another person eats herbs, eat it not. And let him which eat it not judge him to eat it, for God hath received them. So, so the scripture is saying, there's nothing wrong. If they don't want to have meat, then it's fine. If they want to have meat, it's fine. That's what the scripture is saying. Uh, yeah, that's it. <clears throat> that's what. That's essentially what that scripture is saying, right? But obviously, it's not everything you're eating, right? <laughs> you're eating only the things. <laughs> that you believe that the Lord, the Lord has sanctified for you to eat. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's now go to Ecclesiastica. So we're going to go in the red book, the book that was snatched out of the Bible uh, to hide away the truth. But the truth will always come to pass because what is done in darkness will always come to light. Okay. Ecclesiastica. 37 Ecclesiasticus 37 we read from 28 to 31 but all things are not profitable for all men neither hard every soul pleasure in everything be not unsatiable in any dainty thing nor too greedy upon meats for excess of meats bring it sickness and surfeiting will turn into cola by forfeiting have many perished, but he that take it heed prolong it his life. So let's read 28 again. For all things are not profitable for all men, neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. Right? So all things are not profitable for all men. Right? So you can't do what you, do what you want. Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. And you're not going to enjoy everything anyway. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. So don't be crazy. Don't be eating everything in sight. Eating all the meat there is. There's meat around so you want to finish the whole pot because you just enjoy it. Nor to greedy upon meats. Right? So don't be a fat, greedy person. Don't be, you know, you, you see all these meats there in a buffet. And you just want to eat everything in sight because you just enjoy it. And it's just there. You know? And it's saying... Do not be too greedy upon meat. So you don't don't have too much don't don't have too much meat. For excess of meats bring it sickness. So if you have too much meat, it brings sickness. Okay. So if you're eating beef every day, every day you're having lamb, beef. That's very problematic because it takes longer to digest uh, red meat, lamb, beef. You know. It takes longer for it to be digested. So don't be too greedy when it comes to meats and even things like chicken and stuff like that as well. Don't have too much of it because it can make you sick, right? Let's read it again. For excess of meats bring its sicknesses and forfeiting will turn into color. Color just means irritation, right? So it just irritates you, right? Because it because when you have meat, the system, your body is taking a, a, a long time to process it. And if you're having red meat, it takes even longer. It takes approximately four days for it to be digested properly. And that's why lots of people have lots of red meat stored in their body. It's not really going anywhere because they eat meat every day, constantly eating meat, constantly eating red meat, which is the wrong type of meat to eat, to eat every day because it's slower to digest. So therefore, after a while, your body can't take any more. Okay. So it's saying that if you have too much meat, you feel irritable, right? In other words, you want to go to the toilet, right? You want to go to the toilet and you feel very uncomfortable, feel very bloated, right? 
31. By sulfiting have many perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Okay, so it's just saying that you're supposed to take care that you don't have too much meat. Now, the Bible... It doesn't have a problem if you want to be a vegan, be a vegan. If you want to be a vegetarian, be a vegetarian. It's up to you, you know. The Bible does is not saying that it's wrong to be a vegetarian. It's a sin. It's not saying that. In the beginning, we were all vegetarians anyway, right? It's only after the flood, the Most High said you can have meat. And then under Moses, he instituted officially the unclean and clean meats. You know, under the law of Moses. Now, obviously, we're under the commandments of Christ. We're in the new covenant. But, however, we can use the old covenant to follow the righteousness of the law. Right. In other words, we can use that law to repent for our, our unrighteousness. Right. Because our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So if it's a temple of the Holy Spirit, we, we, we look into the law. This, our spirit directs us. And then we look into the law and see where we went wrong in terms of the most high. Right. And then we actually replicate that. All right. We actually fix that. Now, if Christ contradicts that, then then that's different. Right. Or there's things that we definitely don't do, which is a sacrificial law and a ceremonial law. And obviously the moral law, we still have to do that. But with modifications under Christ. Right. So. In terms of being a vegan, you can be a vegan. In terms of being a vegetarian, you can be a vegetarian. In terms of a meat eater, you can eat meat. Don't have too much of it, though, because you make you sick. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are edified. Shalom.